My name's Jenny, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of Orion Update. On today's episode, we're going to learn about a new position within the Parks and Recreation Department and what a vital role that plays in the community. But first, I want to introduce you guys to Patrick Ross, Parks and Recreation Superintendent, as we take a closer look at Camp Aguam. Thank you, Patrick, for joining me on this episode of Orion Update and touring us through Camp Aguam. Yeah, Jenny, happy to be here. Well, all right, our first stop here is the beach, and I know it went through extensive work recently. What happened here? It did. So this used to be um, much, a much smaller area, but very, very popular, uh, and mm -hmm. we noticed that really only about two to four families could use it at a time comfortably. So we actually ended up doubling it in size and adding this very beautiful retaining wall, um, which also then doubled the swimming area. So now more people in our community can come and enjoy it without feeling like they're packed in together. That's awesome. I know there's a couple families out enjoying it right now, and it is one of my son and I's favorite beaches to come to in the community. So this is a great addition to the park here. Correct. Absolutely love it. And we're going to be having one more uh, future, hopefully, addition called the Moby Mat next year, oh, which will allow uh, for easier access for those that may have difficulty walking on yeah. the tough sand, which I know you just did, <laughs> um, as not well as not dress you appropriately to be on the beach, <laughs> <laughs> um, as well as uh, wheelchair users are able to oh, roll on awesome. it and roll right into the water and get some enjoyment. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That'll be a wonderful addition. Looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go hit up the next spot and see Should what we else jump we in? find. <laughs> I mean, I can go up to my knees. Okay. at the fire ball and I know this also had some work done recently. Tell us about the updates here. Correct, yeah. So these beautiful natural rocks which were brought down from the UP um, a handful of years on. ago that we're standing on. Very sturdy. Very but I sturdy. see you almost just slipped. No, so no, actually no. <laughs> this year these beautiful handrails were added by the Friends of Camp Aguam um, okay. to help kind of support you as you're traversing down the mm -hmm. beautiful natural rocks. Um, they also came through and stain these benches for us um, and just kind of really kept it natural here, which is the whole point of this fire bowl. Uh, it feels like an escape away from the busy city life. It is, I love that it is so natural. And if my memory serves me correctly, the daughter of somebody locally famous was recently mm. married here. Ooh, are you talking about the township supervisor, Chris Barnett? I might be. I think you were. <laughs> Yes, he hosted his daughter's wedding yep. out here. I was absolutely stunning. Um, really just showed the natural beauty of what a wedding could be like out here. Um, and we're very thankful gorgeous that- Gorgeous photos. Gorgeous photos. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is a great event space. Well, let's, let's show them the stage where the wedding actually happened. So let's spin this camera around and go take a spin look at that. Spin around. <laughs> spin. <laughs> so this is a stage where the wedding happened, right? Correct. Yeah, and they put up the nice background there as well, too. It's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful spot, but it's definitely showing its age. So the Friends of Camp Aguam have made it a point that their next project that they're going to help fund out here is going to be kind of adding, maybe doing an addition to the deck, adding it, revamping it, okay. making it a little bit nicer, a little more um, solid, as well as doing some minor electrical work so that their concerts um, can be enjoyed out here, as well as anybody else that wants to have good audio and a great beautiful spot to be married. Now I heard you say concert so this is used more for just what more than just weddings. More so than just concerts weddings. there's comedy shows magic shows there's been all sorts of stuff out here correct. right? That's absolutely correct. Um, people just love it because of its nature and its ambiance and its acoustics it's, well, it's a little I, bit of everything. And I can hear all of the birds right now which I absolutely love. And we're um, not too far from the beach and you can't hear them. So it's a nice, yeah, nice break. Is. So, All right, well, I'm excited to see what else the park has in store for us. So let's go check out some more stuff. Let's do it.
So now we're at the chapel, um, which is a little different than the site we were just at where I know weddings were hosted. Tell us a little bit about the chapel. Uh, yeah, so I'll start off with a secret. This is actually my favorite of the, more favorite of the two um, <laughs> okay. places to get married, I would say. It's a little bit more rustic. Um, there is no power down here. Um, it's not as big, but it's a little bit more private and a lot more scenic. Um, you okay. have this beautiful view of the lake and in the fall, when all the tree um, oh, tree covers canopy is down a little bit, you can really see the a lot more of the, the lake. Leaves too. Colors start to oh, change. That'd be so pretty. Um, and then the newest additions, kind of want to talk about over to my right off camera, is a addition of a little parking lot area by a Boy Scout, so we can fit a couple more cars down here. The brides mm -hmm. can get dropped off and enter from stage right. Is that how that works? <laughs> um, and then come on to get married. And behind us, um, last year we had to take out these old benches that were rotting and just a safety concern and a hazard. So we turned the area into some natural grass, um, which you could bring your own chair. We've had people rent chairs with their tent company for their wedding, as well as my personal favorite was the use of straw bells. So oh, they actually that's cute. brought in straw bells yeah. and then people sat on those and then they left and went about their merry day. Oh, that's awesome. And We've actually had a couple of staff members. You're right. right. Yes. Here. So this is the hot spot for <laughs> those that work in the parks department. We've had yeah. a full time member and a seasonal member both get married in this spot. Now, I know my family, we've done some family photos here and the photos always come out great. We're like a late fall type oh. of picture and they are beautiful. Stunning. You get that sneak peek of that lake like you said earlier. It's just gorgeous. Mm. So let's go now and take a look at, I know some of the kids' favorite parts of the park here. Okay. And now we're at the playground. So big kids and little kids alike, this is probably one of their favorite spots, if not their favorite spot in the whole camp. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And this is uh, probably my favorite spot based off yeah. of the community involvement that was yeah. a huge effort to build this playground. So this is actually a community build. It wasn't, mm -hmm. we didn't hire a company and they just did it themselves. This was, well, how, you were there that day. How many volunteers do you think we had that day? So, well, let's give them a little bit of a backstory okay. first. So this was part of a grant with Kaboom and Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was a community build. So the week leading up to it, we had probably 20 volunteers each day. And then on build day, we had over 200 people here, community members here who assembled this all. I mean, what That's an true. incredible thing to do. We did, I think we had to stop briefly because it started raining oh, and it was thundering pouring. and stuff. It was, um, I think roughly right where we're standing, <laughs> maybe a little bit over there, I was roaming in a pump to try to drain this pool that had formed. Right, I remember that. <laughs> it was a wild and crazy day, but it was so amazing seeing that many people come together. And they all um, stayed. And they all stayed through the whole time the whole thing. to build this playground. And what an amazing playground it is. It's got features that I really haven't seen in other playgrounds around here. Yeah. So the, what the global motion, I think yeah, that's called. That's what it's so called. kids get inside of there, stand on outside and it gets to spin. You've got the Netplex here. So a lot of really cool features. And there's one I want to show you real quick. <laughs> oh boy. Patrick, talk to me about this area that we see behind us now. Absolutely. So this is probably yet another one of my favorite areas. Um, behind us, that bluish building is going to be Alberici Lodge, which is rentable. One of our two rentable lodges here. Okay. You have Birch Grove and Alberici. This is mm -hmm. the bigger one of the two. And right behind us is the activity field. So there's been many weddings here. Um, people park, great spot for parking. Um, you have the pavilion next to you. You have the playground for the kids, kind of like a I don't know why I'm right now. Maybe it's because I'm getting married at the end of next month, but I'm in love with love and weddings. <laughs> so I love all of the potential that we have here that Camp yeah. Agawam offers, especially if you're looking to host or have this as your venue to get married. So 
Um, the uh, picnic shelter that I talked about, outdoor fire pit, um, yeah. bathrooms inside, cots to sleep on. Um, yeah, just a great event space. Yeah, it is a beautiful event space. And in addition to weddings, because that's all that's on his <laughs> mind right now, um, in addition, people have rented out for team building activities, for sporting events for kids, all sorts of different Birthday things. parties. Birthday parties, we yeah. We host um, our Green Up event, we was hosted out of there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a great event space. That's awesome. All right, we're getting down to the end now, but there's something else we want you guys to see. So come on, let's go check it out. There's so many activities on this side of the camp. So we had the playground there, and now Correct. we're at hole one disc of golf, disc golf. Hole one. Um, you guys are pretty highly rated on this course, right? Yeah, we are a minus on awesome. the interweb somewhere. It's a very challenging course. It's very hard. It's uh, if it's you didn't notice, about, there's a lot of trees. <laughs> this is, would be the easiest hole. This is the only one that's open. <laughs> this is the only one that's open that you can fully see, but there's a lot of like hills, there's a lot of curves in there, a ton of trees. So it's a fun, but very challenging course. Correct. One of the designers on this course actually works for us. Um, and he really took the nat natural area into consideration when yeah. designing the course and wanted to use all the peaks and valleys. I know we're in Michigan, so we don't have <laughs> giant mountains here. Um, but he we got to really use used, what you have, use right? what you have. Um, so they made it, a, they made it a challenging course. Yeah, they did. Now, like I just said that there's a lot of activities on this side. So besides the playground and disc golf, we also have a Gaga pit, which was part of the um, community build, right? It was. And then we have a free little library as well, too. So this is definitely the hot spot for both kids and adults. All like, yep. All right, now there are some other parts of the park that I definitely want you guys to see, so stick around for some more. I know a parent's concern when they're coming to any playground or park is bathroom access because, let's face it, porta potties are not fun with little kids. Mm -hmm. So I see a new addition here. What's, what's going on with this? Correct. So this is one of two new vault toilets um, that we have in the park system. The other one is off of the, at the Pollyann Trailhead off of Clarkson. Mm -hmm. um, we are waiting for the final inspection by the state of Michigan before we can open them up. So hopefully by the time you guys are watching this video, <laughs> hey. it should be opened up. That's um, awesome. But this one really also does twofold. It helps, as you talked about, a little bit more space inside for parents with their mm -hmm. kids off the playground. Right behind us is the playground, or right in front of us is gonna be the <laughs> playground. Um, and there's also a main road here that people are always driving on on the camp loop. So now kids no longer have to cross over the road to go use that other vault toilet. They can just come right here safely, staying on the same side of the road and in eyesight of anyone watching them so that's awesome that's a great addition to have um right here next to the playground so. and i think it's pretty is that it weird is pretty. for me to say no it pretty? is very pretty i thought that too so <laughs> it's very aesthetically pleasing <laughs> all right we've got one last site to check out so let's, let's go do it So now we're at one of the numerous campsites that can be rented throughout the park. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. So right now we're standing on site six. Um, behind us, you can see five, and then in front of us is going to be seven. So it's a nice little stretch of about three campsites. Um, we mm -hmm. have 10 campsites here that you can rent, um, one of which has a power hookup, but that is the only okay. one. Um, this, honestly, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> this is my favorite part of the camp. Um, okay. We're currently standing in a forest of jack pines that were hand planted during the Great Depression um, after okay. much of Michigan was deforested by wow. logging companies and things like that. Um, that's that's absolutely incredible. So it's an interesting it's an interesting sight to see back here with all the trees and straight in a row and it takes yeah. you back in time a little bit. Yeah it definitely does. Now I do want to mention real quick that with the campsites this is actually a designated stop on the Iron Bell Trail right? Correct. And so people will hop on the trail what in Bell Isle? The and aisle, make their way up and make and their way up we're actually about I th i've been I've, I've been told we're about the perfect stopping distance for okay. a good day's ride okay. i don't ride so i wouldn't know <laughs> that um but that's what i've been told okay. um and campsite 10 has a site that is specifically only reserve only reservable for those that are biking in so that they okay. could, so that they know that they can have a 
a space to stay at night. Oh, that's awesome. Now, you had mentioned the trees, and I do want to talk a little bit more about that while I have you here. So let's go have a seat and chat a little bit more about that. Yeah, let's do it. All right, you said these trees were planted when? Actually, back in the Great Depression, so a long time ago. Wow, that's really awesome. And what a cool piece of history to have here um, in Lake Orion, and especially at Camp Agawam, because this has rich history in, a, in of itself. Absolutely. Um, the camp is how old now? Um, over 100 years old. Over 100 years old, and it used to be a Boy Scout camp. Township purchased it. How I don't even know how many years ago. Uh, about 2014. Um, okay. And then it was closed for a little bit to uh, do some renovations, stuff mm -hmm. like that, to bring it up to speed to be a public public park. That's awesome. Now, with all the trees that we have here, I know um, I had mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video that Parks was getting a new addition to their team that would really support all of this. So tell us a little bit about that. Correct, yeah. So the um, board has been very supportive of creating a natural resource uh, specialist position. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's really going to be focused on preserving trees, nature, the green space that we have, um, and just really making it better to benefit the community. Um, as well as one piece is going to be education. Um, so running education classes okay. for tree plantings, uh, plant plant plantings, <laughs> um, as well as just basic education on things okay. to look for. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of diseases going on in various trees. Um, and hopefully that we, we can share, um, share the knowledge that yeah. whoever that individual is has. That's amazing. I can definitely see how um, vital this role will be to the community in many different ways. So I'm excited for that. Patrick, I want to thank you for joining me, but I do need one last thing from you. I think you said almost every stop was your favorite. So <laughs> put you on the spot now. If you had to pick just one part of the park that's your favorite, what would you pick? Oh. <laughs> That's going to be too one. that's going to be too tough. That's one. okay. I'll pick one. I picked the whole camp. All 150. You picked the whole camp? I picked the whole camp. 1301 West Clarkson Road. Come check it out. You'll see why I picked the whole camp. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Orient Update. It was a true joy to be able to take you around Camp Agawam and show you what a truly hidden gem this is in our community. If you want more information about Camp Eguam, visit www.orionparks.com. Until next time.